Welcome to Cycles TV. This session of the Market Cycles Report is intended exclusively to provide information and education to help individuals better understand cycles and the markets. However, this information is not to be construed as professional advice as to the buying and selling of securities. In no event does the host express any opinion with respect to or make recommendations regarding the purchase or sale of any particular investment instrument. There is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. Buying or selling decisions are solely within the personal discretion of each individual. And now, enjoy the show. Here is your host. Yeah, welcome to the foundation for the study of cycles. My name is Lars Fontin. This is a special episode dedicated to the new publishing or to the republishing of the book from Edward E. Dewey Cycles, The Mysterious Forces that trigger event it's out now and we are very proud at the foundation that we have managed to reprint it's an original reprint of that book um, it's available now at Harriman House um, so please reach out this is a must read for every cycle analyst um, it's the it's the early work of Edward A. Dewey our founder so we are very proud to have this published so therefore today's episode is for sure focusing on one specific chapter and one specific outcome so let's have just a quick look on the um, on the key topics uh, which are part of that book so just first you can have a look at the content so it's full of 14 chapters related to these individual cyclic moments and you see it's even he's talking about his his journey his uh, his his search of cycles where he started his uh, analysis and the experiences Edward Dewey had with cycles so it's anyhow a fascinating read um, and he covers different aspects of cycles just here chapter 4 cycles in you it always starts also with cycles in your personality um, and then for sure about production uh, prices commodities and today I will talk about chapter 9 cycles of Wall Street which is a very prominent topic and for sure he's also revealing cycles even more important than ever the patterns or cycles of war um, and then he concludes his journey about cycle analysis with some findings and these findings are still valid up to today so what I want to review with you today is a, a part of chapter 9 Chapter 9 is titled The Cycles of Wall Street and he is in that chapter referring to cycle analysis in the stock markets. And um, today's focus is on the 40 once months cycle in stock prices. I mean he did this analysis in the year of 1945. So about 80 years ago 70 years ago he did this research going back into 1870s up to the date of his analysis done in 1945 and I think it was published 1970 was the first original uh, publishing of the initial book release and by reading that chapter he will talk about or he will show that there is a 41 months cycle in stock prices by analyzing the US main indices and he's showing that wave he's showing us that cycle but by the way no digital signal processing no computers uh, available at that point in time so this was manual research so it's that's anyhow fascinating you need to think about how the cycle research worked 70 80 years ago but that's another that's another story so I want to cross-check that 41 month cycle because it's important up to today uh, and that's why I think it's it's worth mentioning that chapter which was written 70 years ago on that cycle so um, I mean that was the latest data on until this point in time uh, Dewey had for his analysis and I will now show you and jump with you in today's world 
uh, and let's review this 41 month cycle. So therefore, let's go in our cycle analyzer. Uh, let's now load uh, data into the tools we have today. I mean, Dewey would be surprised or be so happy if he would have these kind of tools. Uh, so we can now apply this analysis in just a matter of seconds, which took days, weeks of work at that point in time. So what I just did here, we have um, price data until today. So this is the S&P 500 weekly. Uh, but now going back, and this is at least uh, for, for today's analysis, the, the best I could found, going back into uh, 1928. So this is kind of point where Dewey's analysis ended. You know, he started 1870. So we start here with the S&P 500, starting our analysis even 100 years uh, um, into, the, into the past. So said that, uh, let's apply our tools here. Um, and now moving to the spectrum, and this is just what you obviously see. There is no other reason. If you, if you check that spectrum, I mean, we don't need to argue or we don't need to discuss. Uh, there's a clear peak around 182 weeks as we are analyzing weekly data series here. There is no other dominant cycle to the left in the spectrum or even no other dominant cycle to the right in the spectrum. So. I think we don't need to argue anything. There's just one long-term dominant weekly cycle. And now guess what? If you convert 41 months into weeks, you will arrive at a nominal cycle length of about, yeah, let's call it 180 weeks. So this is, this is Dewey's 41 months cycle. He shared already or discovered already 1941. And if we just analyze the past 100 years of data, we will identify exactly the same cycle in that data set. So therefore, we have now discovered the same 182-week uh, cycle, which is exactly the same 41-month cycle from Dewey in the data set using the past 100 years. Yes, the cycle is there. Yes, it's no surprise, we know this or Dewey showed us that cycle is important. So where we are now in that cycle is even becoming interesting cross-checking that cycle. So let's overlay that cycle now, which, which we did here just by activating um, that single cycle here onto the chart. And let's now do a quick review uh, going back into, um, uh, into, into the past. Yeah, and you see it even was able to pinpoint the the recession low here then 90, 30, uh, uh, 2, 33. And if you review now this cycle, I mean, this is 100 years ago. Um, and this is now plotted. Uh, let's more fast forward into uh, today's world. So um, you see here it pinpointed the start of the big um, recession or depression here in 1970. A two or the 1973, this big downswing into 1974. So um, this is just one static cycle. Keep that in mind. So how exact was that call here for that 1933 low? And you can, the same cycle, you can fast forward into the year of uh, 2000. So the internet bubble here, the internet bubble, it's the same 41 month cycle. Uh, which is from a timing perspective, fascinating that this cycle guided uh, us in pinpointing yeah, the, the internet bubble burst in the year of 2000. And we can fast forward into the uh, financial crash or the financial crisis, which kicked off in the year of 2007. So you see, this is exactly at line with this cycle, even the duration into the low point here, 2007. And fast forward uh, to today's uh, situation. This was the big top. We have seen the market top at the at the end of 2021. So that that single cycle over this long term period, you see now plotting that static cycle, going back hundred years of historical data. Uh, you see, and I went quickly through that 
a cycle here that you see 1973, 2000, 2007, 2021, starting back in the Great Depression, 1933. I've never seen a single static cycle nailing from a timing perspective these important tops and bottoms in the stock market. And Dewey discovered that cycle in the year of 1945 without any computer. So we just used two clicks uh, with our cycle scanner, uh, which helps us now identifying that cycle. And you know that I was referring to that cycle here, which brings us now back to today. <laughs> what does this mean for today's analysis? And you clearly see that this cycle um, is a continuation of this upswing here, which might last into um, early 2025. I mean, we need to cross check maybe that this cycle top could shift, uh, but this would give us a bit of confidence that there might be still upward uh, cyclic long term support for this year, so 2020. For we are still in this upswing cycle here and we can now use that finally to fine tune our different cycle tools we have. So we could apply uh, technical indicators fine tuned to this 41 month cycle, which you see here now at the bottom of the chart. So you see from a cyclic perspective, it was a great call here on the top confirmed by the technical situation and then the, the 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 bottoming of that cycle in this area here confirmed by this uh, technical indicator and now we need or there's at least some room to the upside um, that this indicator or signal line crosses or touches the upper band and from a timing perspective we have some room until the end of the year so that's the using this to fine-tune technical indicators but you know that we could also add now the concept of future line of demarcation, which is a concept by Hearst, not Dewey. Um, but using that and aligning that to the length of uh, 90, so half of the dominant cycle. And you just see the green line is now here um, plotted as an overlay, which acts just as a shifted price into the future we have crossed to the upside here at that given point in time. And you do it how uh, like to measure now the distance and let's zoom in here a little bit. So you, you measure the distance from this crossing here to the past low, which is then here. And by measuring this distance, you can derive um, the price traveled around 25%. So you look at the top and um, during this timing period, price traveled up 20 to 25%. So we could expect exactly the same amount to the upside now for the price to travel before we arrive at that price target. And if you have um, the crossing around 4,300 4, uh, from a price perspective, now you generate these 25 percent which will give you around 1000 SP points which might give you a price target of around 5300 yeah so that level here or if you want to bring it in as a line so um i think that's somewhere here so this line it's and it's very rough uh, um use of that concept i know but if you know the the cycle length 41 months 182 weeks uh, we can now tune our technical indicators which give some room to the upside uh, we see from the fld concept so we are we also have still some room for the price to move into these range around 5300 and timing wise we also have some room on a timing perspective to continue to the upside by just using Edward Dewey's 41 month cycle discovered and published in the year of 1945 or 1970s as the first publication. And we still reveal that cycle as most dominant cycle, long-term dominant cycle in the stock markets up to today as shown by the spectrum plot. And I showed you now where we are 
exactly today in, in that um, rhythm. So we still can draw our conclusions up to today from um, this great work. And I will just recommend um, do yourself a favor. Uh, reach out uh, to your bookstore and order this fantastic reprint. It's an original reprint, so uh, you really find the original writing here. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a present. It's a present for you. And I just talked about one out of, uh, yeah, I don't know, uh, thousands uh, of charts uh, which are in, uh, available in, in that book um, for you. This is just one example out of that, which hope I inspired you to uh, get deeper into the work of Edward R. Dewey. So that's the episode for today. Uh, I needed to record that session up front, so, uh, but I still hope you like it. Feel free to drop me your comments and the questions and we can discuss it then also in the next live session. Thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. Uh, have a nice week and see you soon. Bye.